Glory to God forever. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God forever. You are welcome to this Bible studies. Our teaching on prayer strategy for solving a persistent problem, which we continued, will be continued tomorrow morning. But for Thursdays, there are days we look into scripture and study fundamental issues of the kingdom that we now belong to. Remember, Jesus came to speak about the kingdom. There is no kingdom without principles of governance. Christianity is a kingdom. Therefore, there are rules and regulations that abides in the kingdom that you need to necessarily align with to secure your full benefit of the kingdom. So Christianity, your salvation, is entrance into a kingdom. Jesus came to bring a kingdom. You've got to know it. It's very critical to your growing in the faith and to your being relevant to the things of God. Your usability by God is a function of your knowing this, that Christianity is a kingdom. Your relationship with God is the relationship of citizens with a king in a kingdom. There are rules and regulations that you necessarily need to abide by. There are principles of governance. I listened to Miles Moreau just now before this broadcast and he spoke about something I have illustrated before in one of in some of my uh, teachings. He spoke about some of uh, the examples I gave about the seed, the potentiality of a seed that the seed is a potential forest, trees and fruits, but except it is planted, the law of procreation for a seed is that it must be planted in the soil, that is the ecology. No matter what you do, the seed will not produce its future. The future of the seed is a tree, with fruits, with a factory producing fruit, fruit juice, employing thousands of people. That's the future of the seed. But that future will not be realized except the seed complies with some natural laws of procreation. There are natural laws of procreation. These are fundamentals, principles, If the seed is not planted in the soil, that seed will not become the forest, will not produce the, la the, the, the factory, will not employ the staff, the thousands of staff that will work in the industry that is supposed to be the future of that seed. So there is a law that the seed must obey. These are fundamental principles for the procreation of that seed. You are a seed as a child of God. The Bible describes you as the seed of Abraham. The seed of Abraham. So you are a seed. God is trying to bring a resemblance as regards the procreation of a seed and you who is also a seed. There are principles. So in our kingdom, we'll be teaching about kingdom principles every Thursday. That you may know Christianity is not a religion. 
It's not just going to church. No, it's a kingdom. And you belong to the kingdom. And there are principles that rules in the kingdom that can give you access to the benefits of that kingdom. And there are some activities you get involved in. You'll be incriminated. And you'll be put in a kind of restriction by the rule of the kingdom because you violated some principles of the kingdom. It's not about devil. It's not about God. It's about the kingdom. Jesus came to preach about the kingdom. He said the kingdom of heaven has come. It's a kingdom. You are invited to be a citizen of a kingdom. Christianity is an invitation to becoming a citizen of the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. So every Thursday, we shall be teaching some fundamental principles of the kingdom. The, 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 found, the foundation we are dealing with now is the foundation of fruitfulness. The foundation of fruitfulness. In the book of Genesis, the Lord spoke in Genesis 1 verse 11. Maybe you want to see that place. He said, he made the, the fruits, he made the plants and the grasses, and he said they shall produce his own kind. I want you to read that scripture. Every living thing is mandated by the, by the foundation of creation to produce its own kind. You, you've got to listen to me. This first explanation is very key. Now, let us look at that place, verse 11. And God said, let every, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit, listen carefully, after his kind, after his kind, is a law, is a foundation, is a kingdom fundamental, producing after its kind. Now, the tree will produce after its kind. The goat is, God said, is a foundation that the goat must produce after its kind. Then you, as a child of God, that have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are supposed to produce after your kind. It means you are supposed to produce another child of God. That is the principle. Hmm. It means as a child of God, who have received Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, you are supposed to produce another child of God after your kind. I say it again. The goat produces goat. The fish is supposed to produce fish. Now, the former you as a human man, as a natural man, as a biological man, a continuum from your father and mother, you are supposed to produce a human child. Your children is natural. But remember, when you got born again, you became a new person. If any man be in Christ, it's a new creation. And the Bible said, henceforth, let no man explain himself as the flesh anymore once you are born again. You are not a spirit. You are not a child of God. You are no longer of the flesh. You are not a spirit. He that is born of the flesh is flesh. John 3 says, he that is born of the spirit is spirit. So you were born of the flesh before, humanly, biologically. But when you give your life to Christ, you are now born of the spirit. So now from that second platform of being born of the spirit, you are also mandated to give birth to other children of the spirit. Since you got born again, how many children have you given birth to? <sighs> hmm. 
humanly speaking, it takes nine months to produce a child. Now let's 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 assume there is no accelerated speed. Let's analyze it by the same speed. As a child of God, how often do you produce children yearly for God? Last year, how many children were you able to give birth to for the Lord? You see, when you are not concerned about being fruitful in the spirit, you are carnal. He said to be carnally minded is death. You are dying spiritually. Your spiritual capacity is dying. When you are not spiritually minded, it's not just to produce biological children, you are also to produce spiritual children. How many people can you count in your hands? These are the children I gave birth to, my children in the Lord. People I spoke to about redemption, about Jesus Christ, about the price he paid, and I brought them to Christ. And they are now growing in the Lord, knowing Jesus better every day. How many children do you have? Or you are among the barren that will be cursed. Or you are among the barren. First of all, do you have the motivation to produce children? How enthusiastic are you about having a child as a child of God? How enthusiastic are you to have another child of God? If the enthusiasm is not there, it's an indication you are not born again or you are not matured. I want to challenge you. First of all, we're going to look at it in sections. First of all, we're looking at the mandate for fruitfulness. The mandate for fruitfulness. So fruitfulness is a foundation in our kingdom. We must replicate our identity as children of God. We must produce other children of God through our, our counseling, through our preaching, through our activity, that through us, many are brought into the kingdom of God through our activities. If you are not desperate about this, if you are not passionate about this, you are not born again. Or you don't know your responsibility as a child of God. Or you are carnal. Or you are barren. First of all, it's a mandate. Let us look at some scriptures. In the book of Mark 16, verse 15 to verse 19, Remember that this is a Bible study on the fundamentals of the kingdom of God, building the kingdom foundation. The Bible said, if the foundation be destroyed, there is nothing you can do that will give you access to the benefit of the kingdom. Psalm 11 verse 3. You wonder why things are not working. There are fundamental things you are supposed to be engaged in that you are not concerned about. You are not passionate about. You are not desperate about. The Lord that sees the heart knows that your heart is not after souls. Your heart is not after souls. It ought to be your bread. It ought to be your passion. How passionate are you about getting a soul, giving birth to a spiritual child for the kingdom. How passionate, how desperate. Hmm. You think Christianity is about going to church and coming back? <laughs> no wonder you are stagnated spiritually. But I know a change is coming. It's not just about increasing the number of your church. No, that's religion. It's about you giving birth to spiritual children as a spirit. You are supposed to produce other spirits in the kingdom of God. Every month, how desperate are you to say from today, every month, 
I must be able to get somebody, at least one person, that I speak to about the love of God that was demonstrated through Christ and bring them to the knowledge of Jesus. How wonderful it is to say every week I must go out. I must go out to look for somebody to talk to, to bring them to the knowledge of the love of God that was demonstrated in Christ. For three reasons, why do we go out to preach the gospel? For three basic reasons. One, to bring the erring person back to a fellowship with the creator of their soul. To reconcile them back to God. That's the primary reason for soul winning. To bring them back to God. The Bible said, all we like sheep have gone astray, but we have not returned to the bishop and the shepherd of our soul. First Peter 2 verse 25. So all that who have gone astray is our responsibility to bring them back to have a reconciliation with the Father. They are lost. We need to recover them. That's the reason why we are going to preach to them. Number two, Jesus has paid the price for them to enjoy the benefit. But except they come to the fold, except they come to the kingdom, they will not enjoy the benefits that Christ died for. Jesus died young for us to live long. They will not enjoy that benefit except they are part of the kingdom. By his stripes we are healed. They will not enjoy it except they come to the kingdom. They cannot be poisoned. They will not enjoy it except they come to the kingdom. Jesus never married so that you can marry. They will not enjoy it except they come to the kingdom. Fruitfulness to have children, to prosper, to have the goodies of this world, protection, provision, direction, benefit of redemption. They will not have access to it. That's why we are bringing them to the kingdom to come and have access to the benefit of redemption, to every price that Jesus paid, that they may begin to enjoy it. A second reason. The third reason why we are bringing them to come and know God, to come and accept Jesus, is that there was something written about them when they were yet in their mother's womb. That's what you call destiny. There is no way they can fulfill their destiny except to come to the one who wrote their destiny. There is no way they can fulfill their mandate except they come to the one who wrote their mandate. God said, Jeremiah, while you were yet in your mother's womb, I formed thee. I wrote down what you will become, that you are going to be a prophet. I wrote it. Now, God is the one that wrote their destiny. But how can they find out except they come to the one that documented their destiny? So we are bringing them to salvation that they may come to the awareness of the purpose, the original intention of God for forming them and betting them to this side of the divide. No one can discover their purpose except they discover the God who wrote the purpose. The third reason why we are calling people to come and know God. The fourth benefit why we are calling people to come and know God is because eternity is sure. The certainty of life after death that is a hell waiting for those who ignore the price that Jesus paid, who refused to accept Jesus. There's hell waiting for them. And there's a heaven waiting for those who will receive this message of Jesus as Savior and as the Lord of their life. So we are calling them to prepare them for an eternity with God. Four major reasons why we are mandated to go and tell the world about the saving grace in Christ Jesus, calling them from darkness to light for reasons. One, to bring them back to a fellowship, to bring them back to a relationship with the Father. They've lost bearing. They've gone away like a prodigal son from their father, their maker. 
So salvation, soul winning, fruitfulness is a mission to return back to God those that have gone astray. Two, it is to make them enjoy the benefit of redemption that God have demonstrated in Christ Jesus. The third reason is their destiny. Everyone have been born with a destiny. No one will know because the product is only the manufacturer of the product that can write the instruction manual. You cannot get the instruction manual from the retailer, from the seller. No, it is the producer of the product that writes instruction. And it says if you go and read it, you will not know what was written about that product. And God is the product of man. He's the one that produced man. He's the producer of man. Man is the product and God is the producer. You can only go to God and get what he wrote about your life. The instruction manual about your life, how your life can be governed and ruled for you to become profitable is only written by your maker. Except you come to him, you can never find it out. Many people rush into taking drugs and they cry and say they don't know why the drug is not working. Whereas they didn't read the instruction manual. Your life is not working because you have not read the instruction manual. How can you read the instruction manual when you have not met the instructor? So we are going out to bring people to Christ for them to come and meet the instructor who wrote their instruction manual. That they may know how their body can function well, how their life can function well, and be able to perform and become exactly what God intended them to be. Apostle Paul said, I have finished my course. Everything that was written of me, I have done all. Jesus said, it is finished. So we are bringing them to the knowledge of Jesus. So everyone can be able to say, the reason why I was born, I have finished all. The reason why God allowed me to be on this part of the divide, I have finished my assignment. The last reason is for them to prepare for eternity. It's for them to prepare for eternity. It's for them to prepare for eternity. It's for them to pray because there is a way that seemed right unto a man, but the end is destruction. A day is coming when everyone will stand before his maker. Those who are justified will go to heaven and those who are not justified will go to hellfire. So we are going out to reach out to people so that they will not be a part of hell. Now, having known the four reasons why we are given the commission to go and preach to people, I want to let you know that it's a mandate. You have no alternative. You are commissioned to go and reach out to people. Now, let's look at the mandate. Genesis 1, 26 and 28. I know this is a Bible study. This is a Bible study. Now, let's go to the Bible. Genesis 1, 26. He said, and God said, let us make mine our own image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over all. But you go to verse 28. He said, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful. I told you just now, the foundation of the kingdom that we belong to, one of the foundation is fruitfulness. You must produce your kind. If you are genuinely born again, you must produce another person who is born again. You must make sure through you, someone is born again. You must make sure through you, someone is born again. It's a mandate. You are commissioned by God. It's your responsibility. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus, as many who are participating in this program, or those who will watch thereafter, may God put upon you the anointing to be passionate about souls, to be passionate about souls, to know it's your primary assignment before other commandment. This is the first one that the Father gave to the human being he created. The first instruction is that you must produce your kind. You are born again. Produce your kind. Produce another born again. 
this is supposed to be a monthly issue. Every month, someone must, because of you, declare that Jesus is the savior of his soul. If you work for the master, globally, people believe that on a monthly basis, you work every month and you are paid salary. If the worldly people can pay you salary after working for one month, don't you think God will pay you salary after winning a soul every month? Try it. After winning a soul every month, make it your assignment. No month will pass by without someone through me giving his heart to Jesus. The way you participate in working day and night to get salary, you get committed like that, looking for souls every day until you get one and watch if God will not pay you salary. It's more faithful than mortal man. He said, um, God bless them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. Remember that God blessed them before he told them to be fruitful. Now, what's the meaning of that? God is commissioning you to be fruitful. Having blessed you, it means use your blessedness as an advantage for soul winning. You have a car, it is easy to convert somebody who does not have a car. You have a husband, it is easy for you to influence those who don't have husbands. Use your advantages, your blessedness, the area where God blessed you to be able to convince others who are not blessed in that area. God bless them. Have God not blessed you? You have eyes, you have hands, you have legs. Some don't have. Find out your advantages. You are a landlord. Some are tenants. It's easy to convert those who are tenants because you are blessed in the area for which they are not blessed. Another reference. Matthew 28. We are looking at Mark 16, verse 15. Mark 16. I'm sure we are still dealing with the mandate. We are mandated. Angel Igbue, you are welcome to this broadcast. Joy, I semota, I celebrate your presence. Glory to God. May God impart upon you the capacity to influence people for the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was so passionate about souls that as he stayed by the well, a woman of Samaria came and he was influencing her to give her life to Christ. The disciples came and brought food and said, Master, eat, eat, eat. He said, <laughs> he said, I have all that meat to eat that you don't know about. I have all that meat to eat. Regina Owens, you are welcome to this broadcast. Florence Ugiagwe, you are welcome to this broadcast. Stanley, you are welcome to this broadcast. I want to celebrate Florence. I want to celebrate Archie Daniel. You are welcome to this broadcast. Please invite somebody quickly. Let others know that we are already on. To Jesus, preaching the gospel is more than food. That is Moses. You are welcome to this broadcast. Don Udoka Edwin, you are welcome to this broadcast. Tina Aredo, you are welcome to this broadcast. Uki Edenaro, you are welcome. Okodua, you are welcome to this broadcast. Glory to God. Emmanuel, Emene, all the way from Ekboma, you are welcome to this broadcast. God's glory, Irabo, you are welcome to this broadcast. Please quickly invite somebody. Olivia, you are welcome to this broadcast. Glory to God. Glory to God. Olivia Abusoma. Easy. 
Young, you are welcome to this broadcast. Joyous Houston from United States of America, you are welcome to this broadcast. Pastor Frank Owens, you are welcome to this broadcast. Iria Boss Stanley, you are welcome to this broadcast. The yoke of barrenness is broken from your life. I declare the mantle of fruitfulness. The mantle Jude Iriano, you are welcome to this broadcast. The mantle of fruitfulness rests upon you. Pastor Sayuki Omere, you are welcome to this broadcast. Peter Obas, you are welcome to this broadcast. Pastor Fenji, you are welcome to this broadcast. I declare the yoke of barrenness, spiritual barrenness, is broken from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. From today, the passion for souls, knowing that it is the foundation on which you build your Christian work. If the foundation be destroyed, there is nothing you can do. You are vulnerable to the attack of the devil. Jesus said, my, my meat is to preach the gospel. The food I eat is to talk to people about Jesus. Olumekun, Gladys, you are welcome to this broadcast. Mark 16, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devil, they shall speak with new tongue, they shall take off serpent, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall also lay hand on the sick, and the sick shall recover. Glory to God. And verse 20, And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them, and confirming the word with signs and wonder. As they went, God began to walk with them. You want God to walk with you? It is when you preach the gospel that God walks with you for signs and wonder. When you preach the gospel, desperately plan it and go, and it will surprise you. Praise the Lord. We are still looking at the mandate. The mandate. We are commanded to go and bring forth fruit. The other reference for the mandate is the book of Ezekiel 33, verse 7 to 9. Ezekiel 33, verse 7 to 9. We are still studying the mandate. The mandate. Ezekiel 33. Verse 7 to 9. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them for me. As a child of God, you are a watchman. You are sent to your community. You are sent to your family. You are sent to the, your neighborhood. You are sent to your working those, those who work in the same office with you, you are sent to the town you are in, to your village, as a watchman, to warn them that there is coming judgment. Hell's fire is real, to warn them so that they can change and run to Jesus Christ. So when I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, yeah, as if God says he's going to destroy the sinners, they are going to hell fire. And if you don't warn them, and you don't want them because you are mandated to go and warn those who are living outside the kingdom to come to the kingdom. Otherwise, they will end up in hellfire. If you don't go and warn them, see what he said. He said, the wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at your hand. He will require their blood from your hand. Anyone that die without your being able to communicate the gospel to them, particularly when they are within your reach, when they are within your neighborhood, when they are in the same family with you, when they are your friends, when they are in the same environment of your interaction, and you had the privilege of seeing them, uh, you relating with them, and you couldn't tell them about the love of God that was expressed in Christ Jesus, that they need to come to Jesus, that they may escape from the dangers coming ahead. You need to bring them to Jesus, that they may be able to fulfill their destiny and to make heaven. Ah, you couldn't talk to them that Jesus has paid the price for their sins. You couldn't tell them that they need to come into a fellowship with the Father. Ah, God said, when they die, their blood will be on your head. Do you want the blood of people who die around you to be on your head? It is a serious danger for their blood to be on your head. 
you've got to wake up. May the grace of God rest upon you today that passionately anyone that comes across your way, that your neighborhood and your environment of influence and activity, that you will not stop praying for them. You will not stop thinking about their salvation. You will not stop planning on how you can get them to hear the gospel. You will not stop reaching out to them to share the gospel until they are born again. Then verse 9, nevertheless, if thou will want the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he does not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. You have delivered your soul. If you preach to them and they are not converted, you have delivered your soul. But not to preach to them, their blood will be on your head if you don't talk to them. We are still talking about the mandate. The mandate for soul winning. We are in the book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 16 to 18, 21 to 23. Luke 14. If you are there, go to that place. Luke 14, 16 to 18, 21 to 23. Luke chapter 14. No, it's a study. It's a Bible study. It's a Bible study. Luke 14, verse 16. Then said he unto them, A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and he sent his servant at supper time to say to them, There were bidding come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuses. The first one said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground and I need to go and see it. I pray thee, please have me excused. Verse 21. So the servants came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said unto his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lane and the city, and bring hither and the poor and the men and the and the hot and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is still more room. And the, and the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges, and compel them to come, that my house may be filled. The, the key word here, no excuse. For saying that you could not win a soul. No, no excuse. There's no excuse. Now people give excuses. Say, no, there's no reason you must compel them to come. It means add extra effort. Add extra influence. Add extra strategy. Add extra activity to ensure someone must, through you, be born again. You must produce your kind. If you are truly born of God, you must be able to communicate the message of your salvation to somebody who must also be born of God. Otherwise, you are fake. Your Christianity is not registered. Every goat has capacity to give birth to another goat. Every fish has capacity to give birth to another fish. If you are truly a child of God, you have capacity to give birth to another child of God. If you are not able to give birth to another child of God, you are not a child of God. Did you hear my explanation? Verse 11 of Genesis 1. Everything God created must produce after his kind. Must produce after his kind. Goat give birth to goat. Fish give birth to fish. Chicken give birth to chicken. If you are a child of God, you must be able to give birth to another child of God. If you are not able to give birth to another child of God, you are not a child of God. You are not. Go and learn how to give birth to the way you were born again, the message you heard. Preach it. We are still talking about the mandate. Luke 13. Verse 6 to 9. We're in Luke 13. Verse 6 to 9. We're in Luke 13. Luke 
He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fish tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereof, and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I have come seeking fruit on this fish tree, and I find none. Cut it down. Why combat it the ground? And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year. Give him this year. I don't know who God is talking to here. Maybe you are the one. God wants to give you this year. This year. Give him this year. Let him alone this year also. I will shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bears fruit, it will be well with him. If it does not bear fruit after that, thou shalt cut it down. <sighs> now, I don't know whether you are the one God is warning now. If by the end of this year, you are not fruitful, you are a child of God that cannot produce another child of God that will be cut down. That cut down is judgmental. Maybe cut down financially. Maybe cut down and you'll be sick, afflicted. Maybe you cut down. Maybe death. Maybe you cut down from your height of glory. Maybe cut down from your level of success. But there's judgment. I pray before the end of this year, May you be counted among the fruitful vine in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus before the end of this year, may you be counted among those who are fruitful in the vine of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are still dealing with the mandate, the mandate of soul winning. In the book of, in the book of Matthew 6, Verse 33. If you look at that Matthew 6, you'll find the reason why many people are not concerned about being involved in kingdom project. They are so concerned about themselves. What they will eat, what they will wear, the house they will stay. That's not first. Look at what God said. Matthew 6. Matthew 6. You see, you are bothered about... Look at from verse 25. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Don't be bothered about your life. That's what God said. What you shall eat. What you shall eat. Or what you shall drink. Nor yet for your body. What you shall put on. The clothes you will wear. Is not the life more important than meat? And the body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air. For they don't sow. Neither do they reap. Neither do they gather into barn, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more better than they? Which of you, by taking thoughts, can add one cubit to his stature? And, and why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the feed, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spine. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or whither shall we be clothed? Verse 32, For after these things do the Gentiles seek. Underline, this is the pursuit of unbelievers. Why will you allow the same drive that is pursuing those who don't know God to be your drive? To eat what I will drink, what I will wear. That's your pursuit. Materialism. Say so that is what the unbelievers seek. For your heavenly father knows that you need, you have need of all these things. You see? All these things you are, you are pursuing. You are pursuing money, 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 money to eat, to buy dress. He said, your heavenly father knows that you need it. A good father will always provide the need of the children. So your father is there to guarantee this. Look at verse 33. He said, but seek ye first. He's not asking you not to seek those things or not to be concerned about those things. But he said, that's not the first. The first thing that your pursuit should be when you wake up in the morning is not about how you will get cloth, how you will get food. No, your first desire should be how you can expand the kingdom. 
how you can get a soul to the house of God on Sunday, how you can get somebody converted, how you can get somebody to be in church on Sunday. You are thinking, you wake up with the thought of the next soul, of the next child, you need to convert to Christ. That should be your passion. Say, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. When your pursuit, when your primary pursuit, when your primary passion is after souls, is after souls, is after souls, after souls, when your primary passion, when your heart desire is after souls, those who must be in church on Sunday, you are praying about it, you are thinking about it, you are going out to talk to somebody, when that is your but your passion, he said, other things that others are pursuing will be added to you. Give it a try this year. Become more passionate about souls and watch God add to you what others are dying for. Praise the Lord. We are talking about the mandate, the mandate for soul winning. Having learned the mandate for soul winning, We'll be looking carefully at the four major things, five major things that will help you to perform very well. That can help you in so many. You'll be able to know what we are, our drive in going to reach out to source. There are five major things that is our drive. One is to get them back to fellowship with the Father. The second drive where we are involved in so many is to get them to come and enjoy the benefit of salvation. The third reason is to get them so that they can fulfill their destiny. The fourth reason is to secure their eternity with God. Now, we also spoke about the mandate. We'll give you some references. Now, I want to look at major factors that are needed for effective soul winning. There are about five in number. You cannot be effective in soul winning except these things are on ground. Number one is intimacy with God. You must be a friend of God. You must spend enough time with God in the place of prayer. You must spend enough time with God. You must be intimate with God. Not just pray in the morning, pray in the evening. No, as you are moving along the streets, you are talking with God. In your bedroom, you are talking with God. As you are busy in your place of work, you are talking with God. It's a friendship. It's a friendship where there is constant communication. You are talking to God. You are acknowledging His presence. You are worshiping Him. You are singing some song that lights in your mind. You are asking Him questions. You are tilting your ear to listen to whether He will communicate to you, whether you will hear a drop of idea in your heart. It's a communion and it goes throughout the whole day. That's key number one. Key number two, you must be involved in intercession. I give you a reference for number one. John 15, verse 2, verse 4 to 6, and verse 8. Write it down. Factors for effective soul winning. Number one is intimacy. Factors for effective soul winning. Number one is intimacy. You must be intimate. You must be a friend of God. John, James, sorry, John 15. Write it down. John 15. I hope uh, Pastor Fengi, you are still there. I hope Pastor Fengi is still there. Four major, five major factors for effective soul winning. The first one is intimacy, friendship with God constant communion and the reference is John 15 verse 2 verse 2 verse 4 to 6 and verse 8 that's the first factor intimacy you must be intimate with God otherwise you will not be able to bear fruit there is no fruit that can come out if the male and the female do not integrate together they must be in friendship and a close association that can produce sexual relationship that brings a fertilization for a baby to be born. The same thing with God. If you are going to produce a child of God, then you must be intimate with God in a romantic friendship. That is what can give birth to a child of God. 
That's why people are finding it difficult to give birth to souls because they are not in friendship with God. They are not intimating with God. So they cannot produce a child of God. To produce a child, it is a romantic continuum relationship with your spouse that culminate into an intercourse that produces a child. The same thing in the realm of the spirit. There must be a continuum of association with divinity, a continuum of communion with divinity that rubs upon you frequently, that now leads to a divine intercourse that produces a communication that will lead to the salvation of somebody. Number two, intercession. Write down Isaiah 66, verse 7 and 8. Isaiah 66. Uh, the reference we quoted for, for the first one is John 15, verse 2, verse 4 to 6, and verse 8. I hope uh, uh, those writing the references, you will put all of them completely. John 15, John 15, verse 2, verse 4 to 6, and verse 8. Now, that is for the first one. For intercession, the reference we are choosing here is Isaiah 66, verse 7 and 8. Verse 7 and 8. Isaiah 66, verse 7 and 8. Go ahead. I want to see that reference properly written. Isaiah 66, verse 7 and 8. Also, also in, um, in that intercession, Hebrews 7, verse 25 and 26a. Hebrews 7, verse 25 and 26a. We are going to read these references to close up. Now, this the third factor for effective soul winning is proper planning and execution. Proper planning and execution. Proper planning and execution. Proverb eleven verse thirty. Proverb eleven verse thirty. Proverb eleven verse thirty. The fourth factor for effective soul winning is preaching the gospel. Preaching the gospel. That is Matthew 24, verse 14. Preaching the gospel, Matthew 24, verse 14. I hope somebody is writing. Matthew 24, verse 14. Jesus said, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all over the world before the end shall come. Then the fifth factor is proper follow-up, proper follow-up, proper follow-up. That is in the book of John 15, verse 16. John 15, verse 16. He said, we are ordained to bring forth souls, and our souls shall remain. We must make sure we sustain them. We must make sure we sustain it. It's not just to preach to somebody and you don't follow up to ensure that the soul is sustained. You must follow up and grow the person up. You must follow up. You must follow up the person, not just preaching and say, I've preached. No, you just keep on going and ensure the person is established in the Lord. Make sure the person is established in the Lord. Now, what is the first factor? Intimacy, friendship with God, intercession, proper planning and execution, preaching the gospel, 
proper follow-up. Now, it's important you know this factor. And as you keep on working with this factor, you will get result. Number one, I've already explained intimacy. is friendship with God. As you keep on practicing friendship with God, you, gain, you begin to have that capacity to produce children for God. Intercession. You must begin to pray for them to be saved. You must be, if you have read the book, The Christ Generation, I wrote some books, some prayer points there on the necessary intercession for soul winning. You can go through that chapter. It will help you. You have to pray for souls to be saved. If you don't intercede for them, for God to touch them, for God to touch them, for God to visit them, that the word you will speak to have effect in their life. If you don't begin to pray for them, they will not be converted. You must intercede. You must spend time praying for those you will speak to about Jesus Christ for them to be saved. Intercession. Also, proper planning. You must plan. You don't just meet you meet a boy and a girl who they are romancing each other. You say, I want to preach to you about Jesus Christ. They will not give their life to you. Because that atmosphere is not conducive for so many. So you must plan. You must be strategic. You must ask God for wisdom. That's what the Bible said in Proverbs 11.30. It said, he that winning soul is wise. It takes wisdom to win souls. Glory to God. The fourth one, preaching the gospel. When you are to preach to somebody, don't go into so many stories. You preach the gospel. I told you just now. The, 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 the drive will help you. You are bringing them back to a relationship with the Father. It will help you in preaching. That they should come and enjoy the benefit of the price that Jesus paid. That they may come to the fulfillment of their destiny. That they may come and secure eternity with God. If you memorize, if you meditate on these four things, it will help you to preach properly. Praise the Lord. And when you are preaching to somebody about Jesus, you must communicate this message in such a way that you end up by asking the person whether you want the person, he will want you to pray with him to bring him to that relationship with God. Definitely we say yes. Then you pray for the person. You ask him to ask God to forgive him all his sins and ask Jesus to come into his heart and reject Satan and break every covenant with the devil. And ask for the Holy Spirit. That is the beginning of salvation. Within 24 hours, you must reach out to the person you spoke to. And follow the person up and ask how he's doing. And begin to teach him the way of the Lord. And then you bring him to the house of God. So that he can be followed up. And every day you must keep on following the person. To ensure that he grows in the Lord. Very important, he separates from his old unbelieving friends. Separation from old unbelieving friends, very critical. Fundamental issues of the kingdom. We want to stop here tonight. I want to let you know we are mandated to preach the gospel. We are mandated to preach the gospel. The benefits of soul winning, they are so numerous, we cannot uh, complete them at all. They are, about, uh, they are about 16, I wrote here, and also I will forward them, uh, I, will forward, I will forward them to this platform, and then you will go and study them, the benefits we have in preaching the gospel. The benefit we have, I will just read some of them to you, the benefit we have in preaching the gospel. Number one, in Matthew 10, verse 32, he will introduce and advertise you to the Father. Jesus spoke in Matthew 10, verse 32. 
that if you are involved in advertising him, if you are not ashamed of him, if you tell people about him, how he came and suffered, he paid the price for sin, he paid the price for poverty, he paid the price for barrenness, he paid the price for stagnancy, he went to hell that they may not go to hell, he shed his blood to wipe away their past, to bring them to reconciliation to the Father and give them fulfillment of purpose. Uh, as you begin to advertise him, he said he will also advertise you to the Father. If you are not ashamed of him, he will not be ashamed of you when he comes to the Father. The second benefit, Luke 12 verse 8, he will introduce and advertise you to the angels. He said he will also advertise you to the angels when you advertise him to people. That is Luke 12 verse 8. The first one is Matthew 10 verse 32. The Jesus will advertise you to the Father. The second one, is he will advertise you to the angels. The third benefit of soul winning, John 15 verse 2 is protection. It secures your protection. John 15 verse 2, protection. Number four, assurance of answers to prayer. The fourth benefit, assurance of answers to prayer. John 15 verse 16. He said when you communicate to people and they are born again and you ensure that they remain, he said whatever you shall ask of the Father, he will give it to you. Anything you ask of the Father, he will give it to you. When you are involved in soul winning and you ensure their stability, he will give it to you. That is John 15 verse 16. That is the fourth benefit. The fifth benefit, 1 Samuel 2 verse 30. He will honor you because so winning brings honor to God. In Proverbs 14 verse 28, he's saying the multitude of people is the king's honor. Proverbs 14 verse 28, when many people come to the knowledge of Jesus, God has honor. And in 1 Samuel 2 verse 30, he said, he that honoreth me, I will honor. So as you honor Jesus, by adding more people to the multitude of people that comes around him, having given their life to him, he brings honor to Jesus. And he said, he that honoreth me, I will honor. Therefore, God will honor you as you honor Jesus through soul winning. Two references I give you there. First Samuel 2 verse 30 and Proverbs 14 verse 28. Proverbs 14 verse 28. Apostle Dr. Emmanuel Igehon, thank you for being online. Iriabo, Stanley, God bless you. God bless you. You are imparted by this message. It's a, it's, a, it's a Bible study for fruitfulness. Now, number six, it causes increase. In Matthew 25, verse 14 to 30, the story of how God gave Jesus trying to explain that when you are committed to so winning, your, your increase is, is guaranteed. He gave one five, he gave one two, he gave one one. And the one that gave that he gave five said, Master, I also was able to add five souls to the one you gave me. The one that he gave two said, Master, I also added two. And the, the, the Jesus said, take the five, add it to your own for increase. The one that added two, take two more for increase. What of the one I gave one? Say, I didn't do anything. I just kept the one you gave me. He said, take it from him. Take the talent from him. Take the gift from him. Take the blessedness from him. Take the advantages I gave him from him. And there was a cost placed on him. So, but for those who made attempt to increase, the Lord increased them. So, so winning secures increase. Number seven, Proverbs 11.30 and Proverbs 3 verse 35. Anyone who is involved in soul winning shall inherit glory. Proverbs 3 verse 35 said, the, the wise shall inherit glory. And who is the wise? He that winneth soul is wise. That is Proverbs 11 verse 30. And in Proverbs 3 verse 35, it said, He that is wise, the wise shall inherit glory. As you begin to involve in soul winning, you are going to inherit glory. Shame 
will never be a part of you again. He breaks the yoke of shame from your life. He breaks the yoke of disgrace from your life. In any area where there is a reproach in your life, it is broken because you are involved in so many. It brings glory to your life. Number 8. Daniel 12 verse 3 and Proverbs 11 verse 30. He said, You shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Those that are involved in soul winning, they shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Get ready to shine. As you get involved in soul winning, you are ready to shine. Your light will not be put off. Darkness will not prevail against you. Your shining will be guaranteed in soul winning. That is Proverbs 11, 30 and Daniel chapter 12, verse 3. Daniel 12, verse 3. <coughs> Gladys, you are welcome. Uzoma, welcome to this broadcast. Ehi, Ehi, and Kate, you are welcome. Evangelist Mrs. Faith Olagbegi, you are welcome. Gloria, uh, Abibu, you are welcome to this broadcast. Number nine. Ecclesiastic 8, verse 5 to 6, he will be able to design the time and the correct method of getting things done. Those who are involved in soul winning, they will, they will be able to design the time and the correct method of getting things done. Ecclesiastic chapter 8, verse 5 to 6. Number 10, Matthew 28, verse 19 to 20, you will always have his abiding presence. He said, go and preach the gospel. And he said, lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. If you go and preach the gospel, he said, lo, I'm with you always. His presence is secured always by those who preach the gospel. You know why you don't have the presence of God? Only demons are around you, witches are around you, because you are not a preacher of the gospel. You don't share the gospel to people. You don't encourage people to come to the house of God. But when you do, he said, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world, if you are involved in so winning. The presence of God is guaranteed. Number 11, Mark 16, verse 20, and Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, verses 6 to 12. Your words will be confirmed with the miracles, healing, signs, and wonder. In Mark 16, verse 20, he said, and he went and followed them, and he confirmed their word with signs and wonder when you are involved in so winning god will begin to confirm your word with signs and wonders and miracles then we have romans 1 verse 16 the power of god unto salvation is apostle paul said i'm not ashamed of the gospel of god of god for it is the power of god unto salvation now, when you begin to preach the gospel, you receive power to minister salvation. That word salvation is sozo, to heal, to deliver, to set free, to make whole, to provide. All this ability is released upon you if you are a soul winner. Then we have number 13, Acts 5, 17 to 20, supernatural freedom and deliverance. You know, the Bible, in that story, Peter was kept in the prison. But an angel went there in the night and said, Peter, you are the one preaching the gospel. You preach on the day of Pentecost and you have been preaching and they lock you up and the, the angel said, come out. The people are waiting for you to hear the gospel. And they brought Peter out supernaturally and he went to the, to the, to the temple to preach the gospel. It's, you cannot be caged. You cannot be imprisoned. You cannot be held hostage. If you are a preacher of the gospel, no power can imprison you. No power can cage you. No power can limit you. You are too important. You are too useful for the kingdom to be kept in a cage. Freedom, supernatural freedom. That is Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, verse 17 to 20. Number 14, Psalm 91, verse 14. Promotion is secured for you. 15, the 15th benefit for so many, Psalm 91, verse 14 and verse 16. He said, if you love me, keep my commandment. And his commandment is to, is to preach the gospel. And if you see there, it guarantees long life, long life. 16, Psalm 91, verse 14 and 16. He will show you his salvation. He will show access to revelation. 
Access to revelation. Access to revelation. Psalm 91 verse 14 and 16. Psalm 91 verse 14 and verse 16. When you love God, and what does it mean to love God? He said, if you love me, keep my commandment. And what is the commandment? Go ye into the world and preach the gospel. He said, he will show you his salvation. It means you have access to revelation, divine revelation. God will begin to show you things when you are involved in soul winning. 16 benefit of soul winning. I have already explained the drive for soul winning. For five major things that can provoke you to, to, to talk about soul winning. The factors that can help you win souls and the benefit of soul winning. I also explained the mandate for soul winning. It's a mandate in Genesis 1 verse 11. Every living thing that God made, he said they shall produce their kind. They shall produce their kind. Goat give birth to goat. Fish give birth to fish. Child of God must give birth to a child of God. If you are not yet doing that, you are violating the fundamental principles of existence. And there are consequences when there is a violation. But there are benefits and blessings when you comply and in alignment with instructions. I dedicate you to God that from this teaching, may the anointing of God that will provoke you for continuous involvement in soul winning rest upon you in the name of Jesus. May the passion that will put upon you a continuous desire to look for people to influence for Jesus, may it rest upon you in the name of Jesus. May you never rest until you are able to get a soul every week, get a soul every month for the kingdom of God. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? So winning is a foundation in our kingdom. Be involved and your future will be secured. I love you. I'll see you again tomorrow morning for another broadcast on prayer strategy for solving a persistent problem. Bye-bye.